welcome to this video and what I want to show you here is how you can calculate the mass of Jupiter by using its moons and by using a small telescope. So similar to the telescope I've got behind me, you can actually make some observations of the moons orbiting Jupiter and you can work out the mass of our largest planet in the solar system. So let's start with Jupiter and its moons. So here we've got the four Galilean moons. We've got Io, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa in no particular order. So we've got these four large moons. If you've got a pair of binoculars, even a fairly small telescope, you'll be able to see these moons in a line near Jupiter. So Jupiter's quite easy to see anyway, but if you look really carefully, you should see four smaller objects that appear to be in a bit of a line and that's what we're going to use. That's what you're looking for and the movement of those to get the mass of Jupiter. So first, if we were to watch over a period of time, days, weeks, months, we'd find that these four moons would orbit around Jupiter and they take on the order of days to about half a month or so to actually orbit Jupiter. Now, when you're looking at Jupiter in your own telescope, they're not going to do circular orbits because we're looking kind of edge on at the plane of the orbit. So they, they appear to be moving in a line as opposed to all the way around. And what you'll actually see is something a little bit more like this. So this is an image of Jupiter and the four moons. And again, it's taken with probably about an eight or nine inch telescope. Jupiter itself is overexposed. So we don't really care about how beautiful Jupiter looks for this task here. What we're interested in is the movement of the moons and the moons are a lot fainter than Jupiter is. So we want to make sure that we've actually got a bright image of the moons as opposed to Jupiter. So you'll find that Jupiter will be a little bit overexposed in the centre. So this is what you'll see and as you make observations each day, each week, the positions of those moons in that line will change and that's what we want to basically capture to measure. And there's two ways you can do it. You can either just visually look at it, make a note of their positions, their relative positions with respect to Jupiter's diameter, or you, you can take an image and then you can actually measure on the computer and get a little bit more of an accurate result. But you can do either way. So you don't need anything sophisticated for this. As long as you can actually see Jupiter and the moons, that's pretty much all you need. So we're going to start with Kepler's third law. So Kepler's third law basically states that the further away a planet is from the sun, the longer the orbital period. So they orbit slower and they've got a lot further to go around as well. So you get this relationship here with all the planets, the further away they are, the longer their orbital period becomes. And we can actually work out what the orbital period might be of something that we don't know. If we know its position, we can work out its orbital period. And you've got the equation there on the right. And Jupiter's satellites or moons follow the same relationship. So if we can work out what the orbital period is, and their semi-major axis, there's only one variable left in that equation, and that's the mass of Jupiter, which would be m1. m2 is actually the mass of the moon, but we will neglect that because actually it's very, very small. So if we start with that equation for the orbital period, which is p, we can then rearrange it for the mass of Jupiter. So here, like I said, I've taken out m2 because it's a very small mass, it has a negligible effect and we've just called m1 m jupiter instead and then we find on the right hand side of that equation the only two variables we have is a which is the semi-major axis and p which is your orbital period now they're both things that we can measure with a telescope so there we go it's just those two bits that we need to work out the orbital radius and the orbital period so how are we going to do that so before you make any kind of start, you need to make sure that you know which moon is which. So I showed you the image a few slides ago, and we had no idea which moon was which really. So there are some really good online tools which can help you identify which moon is which for the current time. And this one here, you've got G, I, E, B for the different moons. And just make sure that you know which moon is which, so that when you make your measurement, you get the right moon. And also, depending on what style of telescope you're using, the optics are slightly different. So the image that you're actually seeing is going to be slightly different. So just make sure you've got the right option there because it'll either be kind of inverted or be mirror reversed. Um, it'll be slightly different. So just make sure you've got that telescope type 
selected correctly for yours. Now, once you've got that, you've made your observation, we need a distance from the center of Jupiter at that time. So the first measurement you take is the time that you've actually looked at the moons and Jupiter. And the second one is the distance from the center of Jupiter. Now, if you've got a camera and you can take an image, you can do something a little bit like what I've done here. So I've just copied the image of Jupiter and I've moved it across and measured how many Jupiter diameters the end moon is away from the center. And it's about six and three quarters for this particular one. I mean, you could do a much better job if you had more time. Do it for each of the four moons and you'll get a distance in Jupiter diameters. So you're just measuring a relative distance and you can do it visually if you want because you can get an approximation for how far that might be visually. You get a better, more accurate result if you actually measure it like this. But then you can convert to an actual distance. So we know that the equatorial diameter of Jupiter is 142,984 kilometers. So we can actually times that 6.75 Jupiter diameters by its equatorial diameter, and then we'll get an actual distance in kilometers where that moon would be from Jupiter. Now, when you do that and you've took enough measurements over a period of time, so you're going to want to do a few weeks really, and it all depends on your weather. So I did it here for Callisto, and the data points I made were the red crosses. So I've made a couple of red crosses on here. You can see where there's some gaps due to the bad weather, but you can see it fits fairly well to the blue line. So the blue line is a computer simulation I wrote to mimic the motions of the moons, and they overlay reasonably well. There's a couple of bits where they don't fit perfectly, but you have to think how you're making those measurements. You're not taking extremely accurate measurements using a fairly small telescope. So the fact that they fit reasonably well is actually quite good. You want to get as many data points as possible for each of the moons, and you'll get this nice shape, this like sine wave. So once you've got that, you can get your two variables out for your equation. So one period of that wave would be the orbital period. So you can either measure from trough to trough or peak to peak, and that will give you your orbital period. And half of the full amplitude is going to be your semi-major axis, your orbital radius. So you can measure from trough to peak and just half it to get your semi-major axis. And when you've got those, you can go back to that equation and you can put your values in to get a mass for Jupiter. Now, if you do that for all four moons, you'll get four different values because, for example, Io is quite close to Jupiter, so its orbital period is it's quite fast orbiting, really. So you're not going to get many data points and your plot might look quite noisy, whereas the further out moons, you'll get a much better fit. So you get four different values. You can then average them if you want. You can see how close you get to different moons, depending on how it looks. But if you do all of that, hopefully you get a mass reasonably close to this. So this is this is the actual mass of Jupiter, which is 1.9898 uh, times 10 to the 27 kilograms. And you should be able to get approximately in the right area there just by doing this method. But hopefully, if you've got some time and a telescope, you can spend some clear evenings looking out, taking some measurements, and you can actually calculate the mass of our largest planet in your back garden, which is quite exciting to do. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.